Welcome back to People Be Live. I'm your host, William Haynes. <laughs> it's a wonderful night in Los Angeles. Hey, do you guys care about the United States educational system? <laughs> How about affirmative action? Yeah. 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 Well, if you do, you should follow People Be Like on Twitter at People Be Like. <laughs> we tweet the best things, I swear to Gandhi. <laughs> By the way, tonight's story is gonna make you trip because it's about an Indian American guy named Vijay Jojo Choco Ingham. In 1997, he wanted to go to a medical school, but he had a measly GPA of 3.1. <laughs> Instead of just going to community college, he decided to cut his hair, uh, trimmed his long eyelashes, and applied as an African-American student. What? <laughs> and guess what? He actually got in. No. Oh. <laughs> he went to 11 different interviews, and only one of them called him out for his fraudulent race. <laughs> so this guy has, is one of those guys that goes on all the news stations. He's been on CNN. He's been on MSNBC. He was recently on Fox News. One of my favorite of those clips, he described that there is no Blackistan. Uh, there is no country called Blackistan that black people come from. Black is a color, not a race. This guy's just being a <laughs> <laughs> Risky though, right? Absolutely crazy. Only kind of though. So here to explain his actions is the man himself, VJ Jojo Chocolingo. Hey. Nice to meet you. Come on in. VJ. Nice to see you. Good to see you too. So first off, I just wanted to say, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, you know. You know what you did. Yeah, I took advantage of the system. I screwed the system, you, you know? You took advantage of the system. All right, for people Look, who don't if, know. If the system is going to screw you, screw the system. Okay. Woo! Yeah. All right, that sounds like an opinion to me. So in 1997, you had a 3.1 GPA. You knew you couldn't get into any good Ivy League colleges. Uh, medical school. Medical school. Medical school. Medical school. Medical school. So you decided that you wanted to take advantage of the system, affirmative action. Exactly. And you applied as an African American. Yes, I did. Now you joined the Black Student Union. What does that mean? I just showed up for a couple meetings. <laughs> it was a great club. I had a, I had, I had a girl who I was kind of interested in at the time who had absolutely no interest in me, who was the president of the club. I just asked her if I could join. She's like, yeah, sure, just show up for the meetings. <laughs> yeah. I paid the dues and I was a member. It's actually, a, it was a great club. Shaved your head. Yes. Went by JoJo. Yes. Your middle name. Yes. Went My, to 11 interviews, I believe? 11 medical school interviews while posing as a black man. Only one of them called you out on your fraudulent race. Yes. How did yes. that go? Um, well, at Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland, Ohio, which is one of the best medical schools in this country, uh, the, the instructor, the guy actually said, you're lying about your race because it'll help you improve your chance of admission. So what I told him was, I don't want to talk about my race. I want to talk about my qualifications to be a doctor. Because you didn't lie on your application. Okay. I didn't lie about anything except my race. Okay? <laughs> now, I wish I could say it's because I'm an honest person. I didn't lie because I was terrified that there would be an inquiry. Yeah. If there was, I wanted them to say, look, we've got nothing on you except you lied about your race. Well, when you went on MSNBC, you said, uh, there is no black as Stan. You are black. You're darker than me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you just as black as I am. Yep. Uh, and tell me what you do now. Uh, today, I'm an admissions consultant. I actually help people who want to go to medical school, college, and grad school, although I don't advise that you lie about your race. <laughs> That's a bad idea. What were you doing in high school? Why didn't you uh, try to secede more? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. First, first of all, uh, you know, for instance, in high school, I was a National Merit Scholar. So I actually got into University of Chicago, which is a pretty good school, mm -hmm. but I was a college frat boy. And we had a yeah. lot of fun. Okay, yes. like, like, I drank like a fish in college. <laughs> in college. Okay? Yeah. And I still got into medical school. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if I can celebrate that. <laughs> Where did you end up going? Oklahoma State, I believe? Or uh, St. Louis University School of Medicine. I got into St. Louis U despite the fact that my 3.1 GPA was dramatically lower than their average of 3.7. Wow, that's a feat. I just, what I think is funny about this story is obviously you did something you weren't supposed to do, but I believe in life that there are people in this world like you who are aware that you can do what you want to do. Usually you're supposed to do it for a good reason. <laughs> you ever feel bad like that you took an opportunity away from a student? Um, first of all, I don't feel bad about lying to the medical schools because they lie to everyone, but I, 
I try to make the best of my experience. I, wanted to, I believe that affirmative action, the way that admissions works in this country, it's a system of legalized racial discrimination against Asian Americans and whites. And it also promotes negative huh. stereotypes about the capability and professionalism of African Americans and Hispanics. Let's um, talk about what you mean by that uh, specifically. It actually is harder to get into a school as an Asian American having a 4.0 than it is for me as an African American. I think that's really important for black people to also know that if you can try, of course it's been hard, it's always been hard for us in this country, but now it is uh, the most it's ever been designed to see us succeed. So that's true. I also wanted to bring up, uh, you have a book out. Yes, my book, Almost Black. <laughs> it tells a story of how I got into my bed posing a black. It even has a quote from my sister, Mindy Kaling, who said this book will bring shame on our family. <laughs> so. Yeah, let's bring that up for a second. Your sister coincidentally just happens to be Mindy Kaling. Yeah. Woo! Woo! You pulled this off back in 1997. Yes. So your family is just funny people. This is funny. Yeah. It, 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 Dangerous. I would describe you as a Loki in you know, this world, but it actually is really funny, dude. Yeah. I was wondering though, do you think you could pass the black test? If the black test is about cultural anthropology, things like that, I can do it. If the black test is about behavior, all right, well, if you pass the black test, you get an honorary black degree. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh. uh, first question first. Is this your baby? No. Yeah. Yeah. Correct answer. Always at first, it is not my baby. Hold on, I just want to take a little bit of this. You know what this is? I have no this idea. A little bit of coconut oil, just. Take a little bit of that. <laughs> I don't know if it'd work as well in my hair as yours. Yeah. I really don't think so. It wasn't part of the test. I just wanted to <laughs> brush it up a little bit. Next question. What is this? Oh, it's a do rag. It's a do rag. Oh, the paper, you said the thing over it. No, no, but it had a thing over it. it was supposed yeah. to not, you were supposed to know, but you know what this is. Yeah, yeah. Culturally. I just wanted to wonder if you would try it on. Okay, okay. I don't know if I can know how to put it on correctly, though. So while you're uh, trying on the do-rag, I wanted to ask you, when do you typically wear a do-rag as an African-American? I would have no idea. <laughs> At the liquor store, picking up swishers. <laughs> Food for less. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, you're going for the backwards butterfly knife. <laughs> I guess. You're an experienced African American. Oh. Wow. Oh. Hey. Jojo. Jojo. All right. I'm going to say you are officially black now. Thank you. Thank you. You can say the N word once pr privately. <laughs> I won't go that far. Yeah. I can take it. You don't have to keep it on. I, I, I can take it back. I, I will say one thing though, you know, uh, uh, as an admissions consultant, I've had the opportunity to meet a lot of aspiring African Americans who, uh, who frankly achieve great things in our country. And you say the end words earlier, and I, I've heard, you know, many of my African American friends. I've just been walking across college campuses and heard uh, African Americans use the term and the N word. I said it I think all that, the time. <laughs> look, buddy, I, I think it's very demeaning oh, yeah. to your community. Uh -huh. African Americans have achieved so much in this country. Yeah. And to use a word that is derogatory of yourself, I think that's it's self destructive. Hmm. It's very self destructive. But what are you doing? Up. <laughs> like, how am I supposed to tell him? <laughs> you right, though. <laughs> you right. <laughs> I mean, just saying. Well, uh, VJ, I just want everyone to know about your book. Where can they find it? Almost Black. It's available on Barnes and Nobles, Amazon, and booksellers everywhere. And. They can actually, if they want to be consulted into getting into college, you can actually help them, huh? Yes, go to sosadmissions.com. 
look, look me up and I'll be happy to help you in your application to college or graduate school and I promise I won't tell you to lie about your race. <laughs> 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 Ha, 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 ha.